Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello and welcome to mold 63, the long awaited mold that I had to postpone last week due to my kiln tripping. So here it is, three holes on one side, so I pull those ones up, tip them out after about 15 minutes because it's quite hot here at the moment. And then on the other side, there's these three other little holes. So whilst it's stripping out, I pull those ones up and I left those ones solid. I don't usually leave them solid, but you'll see why. I open it up to reveal this gorgeous set of funky little penguin dudes. I really love them. One of them's laying down, resting its head on its hand, the other one's on its back and the other one's doing a cute little handstand. So here is the mold. It is a penguin mold from 1985. I really love it. I think that this is a winner in my books just because it is so cute, quirky. I love their little poses. They are so adorable as a set and my favorite thing about these pieces is that they've got such a smooth surface for painting on so that I can do so much with them so you probably couldn't see on the camera but I left those solid those little feet are the other three so I knew that they had to be solid because it was so small um, I kind of had a feeling that it was like an attachment and I would never be able to get them not solid just because of how small the holes were so I scratch and score those and add slip and put them together and here they are post bisque firing sometimes I paint straight on green wind, sometimes I do bisque firing but for this one I decided to bisque fire them because of the idea I chose to go with this week so the idea I chose is outer space. I know, right? Penguins, outer space, they don't really mix, but I'm going to make it work. I just had this comment a number of times on the suggested post and also on Instagram, a number of people asked for galaxy stars, universe, lots of different things, planets, aliens, all of it. So I'm not doing aliens on this particular piece, but I am going to do it like a galaxy outer space theme, which I am really excited to play with because it's just so random to put like outer space stuff on a penguin. <laughs> Anyway, the way I am doing the outer space theme is I've got this beautiful color palette of some blues, mostly black, but like using the blues and purples and then the highlights of pink to sort of just do this mesmerizing splodging motion all over the penguins. So this is why I bisque fired them first was so that they were hard enough to take the pressure of all this sort of sponging and I didn't accidentally knock off one of its little footsies. I actually had a lot of fun sponging these down because it was just fun to play with layering all the different types of colors and then smoothing them out and blending them. It was almost like I was doing makeup. I'm not really good at doing makeup, but I felt like that's what it would be like to do foundation and concealer on your face. Those aren't probably right, the right terms. I don't do makeup. Anyway, I just felt like that's what I was doing. I was just making these guys over. Once I was generally happy with the coverage, <laughs> I really sound like I'm talking about makeup. Once I was happy with the coverage of the sponging motion, I decided to go in with a pattern-like detail as if you're looking into the galaxy and each penguin, because there's three different types of penguins, so there's the one doing the handstand, one laying on its head, like its hand on its head, and then the other one's kind of like got its feet up with its booty up. Um, so because there's three different ones, I decided to do three different patterns. The first pattern was going to be like a planet, uh, so like your Saturn kind of style planet with the rings. And then the second pattern was going to be a crater like planet or moon, whichever way you want to take it. And then the other one will be a sort of crescent moon, but in blue. I thought the best way to add to this sort of pattern look was to actually splatter white underglaze all over them by flicking a brush covered in runny underglaze. And the motion of that was to make it look like little like shining stars, little shooting stars darting off across the little penguins. So once I did one side, I rotated them to splatter them some more and just really adding some depth and texture to the pieces underneath the pattern work that I'm going to add. This was another step that was very, very fun. Very fun. I'm so used to being so rigid with my moments and 
so precise with my underglazing that it just felt so nice to just be so freeform and just letting the underglaze dictate and say where it wants to go and me working with that I it was so fun like look at this it looks amazing I'm so happy with these some would say I'm over the moon <laughs> I had to do it. I feel like there's so many good space puns out there that I am really, you know, missing out on right now, missing my opportunity to say, but I'll just have to put those in the shorter format videos for you to watch. Let's just take a moment to talk about outer space, right? I find outer space so miraculous and bizarre and unfathomable. I'm probably not the best person to be listening to about outer space because I don't really know anything about it, but there's a few facts and things that I've heard over my lifetime that I just find bizarre. Like the fact that we've discovered more outer space than what we have sort of even uncovered in our own oceans and seawaters. Like that is mind blowing that we have put our efforts towards what's beyond our skies more than our own what we've got in our own backyard essentially i find that fact really wild i also can't imagine living out of space so like there's been all this talk about potentially living out of space but i just can't imagine it like i can't imagine what it would actually be like i think i like it on earth too much I like the trees and the creeks and the beautiful nature around me and the houses and the things and the people. Like I, I know that essentially if you move to outer space, there would be things that would, I guess, like fulfill that space that you long for and miss on earth. But I just don't think I could do it. And I sort of have a fear of space in a way I think I'm a bit scared of it and I think that's because I don't know it very well and I don't understand it and I'm also very scared of rocket ships they scare me I'm very scared of like like launching into the sky and like potentially not coming back that is a fear of mine that I didn't realize I had until I'm talking right now but would you live out of space like if you had the option to live out of space instead of earth like would you choose that let me know in the comments because I want to hear your thoughts and feelings. Like, obviously, I think if it got bad enough that the Earth was inhabitable, unhabitable, inhabitable, one of them, where you can't live here anymore because it's too hot, too cold, it's just apocalyptic. I'm sure that I would make the decision that's the right fit for me at that time, but I just, I don't think I could do it. I don't think I'm brave enough for that. I It just gives me the willies, you know? It's a little bit scary for me. Out of space conversations always get really weird for me because now I'm having this like reflection about how we should be looking after the earth that we've got. We are investing so much time and energy onto making a plan B instead of looking after plan A. Like all this research is because let's look and see if we can live out of space in case something happens to this earth as if we can't do something about it and look after it. I don't know how my train of thought has turned from something that was really exciting to now something that's really sad and melancholic to think about. The fact that we're exploring outer space for self-preservation instead of looking after number one, like our Earth. But I'm going to just leave that thought there and not unpack it anymore because I think I'll go down a spiral. But I wanted to just say I haven't spoken about aliens because I feel like I want to do an alien themed work in the future. So this is very space themed, just sort of just more like a galaxy idea. I want to do aliens down the track, but I want to save my alien discussion for that video because I just cannot believe that there's no such thing as aliens. Like I honestly, I'm just going to leave this here that I think that we can't be the only ones that have existence. There's got to be some some other form of life out there. And that's all I'm going to say about that for now. So <laughs> these penguins, this got weird. This got really weird. Anyway, these penguins got their glaze dip in action and then they went into the kiln. Now this week, because I told you that the kiln tripped and I missed out on revealing it last week, I had extra time to do an extra firing, which means I got to add a little bit extra pizzazz to the stars on this piece. So I pack this kiln, unpack the kiln, then 
add some gold luster to make some glittery stars and then repack the kiln. So here we go, opening up the kiln for the first glaze firing and then we're gonna do the last star, but the glaze firing is the most satisfying because this is where the transformation truly happens. And I must say it's so impressive how that sponging of the galaxy has come out. I love all the colors and the different pops of pinks and purples amongst that bluey black color. It's fascinating and so mesmerizing looking at every single one, how they've got so much variation yet they're the same pattern. It's so beautiful. I'm so impressed with these pieces. So now I'm going to add the gold luster onto these to add a few extra little gold star details into this galaxy. So I do that by doing some sort of like different shaped stars with little crosses and hatching and then I do a few little dots here and there to sort of make little sparkles all over them. I only just do it enough in the gaps to complement it. I don't want to go over those little yellow stars because I, I kind of like the way that they look. I think that in the future there could be a piece where I don't do those yellow stars and just do it all gold stars but I just think it sort of gives them this extra sort of special element like how some stars look like they shine brighter in the galaxy. So these are that star. Back into the kiln they go for their third firing now and here is the finished result of that gold luster. So I'm going to unpack those from the kiln and we'll have a look at them. This week's mold I decided to make five sets of the pieces just because I love them so much and for that reason I'm only going to show you one complete set because otherwise it would be an hour long video of me showing all the details in every single one of these. The reason I picked this set out was this was the set that had the most color variation in the galaxy and I think I love these ones the most because they have the most pink highlights which I think really added to that nebula galaxy star look that I was going for and I think I really hit the nail on the head if I humbly say so myself. I really like how this turned out, something I have never done before. I just want to flag that I've never done this before and I cannot believe the results I got. I'm so impressed that these just feel exactly like how I wanted them to look. They are gorgeous, they are mesmerizing. The blending and sponging has just given me the exact texture that I wanted. And then the patterns give it this quirky sort of cartoony feel that matches the character of the penguins. So it kind of feels like they were meant to be space penguins, which is so bizarre to say out loud. I also forgot to mention that this little penguin makes me giggle because it looks like that meme that went around that high stretcher meme. It's kind of really creepy, but it made me giggle anyway. I really love these pieces. I would really like to know what you think of this week's theme and also this week's piece. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this weird and wacky chatty video and here is your sneak peek for the next reveal.